Hello, this is Ryan Lester, your host of CX Next Live. Uh, welcome to this week's edition or episode of CX Next Live. For those of you joining for the first time, this is a weekly series we do focused on the world of customer experience, learning from real world practitioners, talking through strategies, challenges, opportunities in the very dynamic world of customer experience that we're all facing today. Uh, for those of you back again, thanks for returning. Great to have you here and really looking forward to our discussion today. Um, for those of you that are here for the first time or have been here before, don't forget to ask questions. You can comment throughout the video today and we'll look at those comments and questions and make sure we reply. We do this weekly series for all of you out there to really help you better understand the world of customer experience, how can you improve your strategy, how you can get closer to your consumers, and really learning through real world examples. So we're here for you, love your feedback, and really looking forward to hearing from all of you on what are your core challenges, what are the things you're doing to adapt your strategy, and what have you learned and what you've done in 2020 with all the dynamics going on, on around us every day. I'm really excited for our discussion today. Uh, we have a really great guest who's living it, a real world practitioner driving this digital transformation. Um, the world of financial services is a space that you know, has lots of investment, lots of change, lots of opportunity. You know, consumers looking at you know, the role of brick and mortar versus online, you know, people looking for local and regional banks in addition to large banks. So it's a, it's a really great kind of, I think, uh, microcosm of what's going on in the broader customer experience world. So without further ado, I'm really excited for my guest this week, uh, Ben Wells. Ben, welcome. Great to have you here. Hi, Ryan. Uh, nice. Thank, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, great to have you join. So Ben uh, Ben is the um, digital banking officer at Decora Bank. Uh, Decora works closely with our team here at Log Me In. Um, they've been leveraging Bold360. But I think their journey is one that really anybody can learn from on you know, how you can accelerate engaging with your, your members, your customers uh, in a new and exciting way. And I'm really excited for Ben to share you know, his journey and their learnings at Decora Bank. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Ben, let's start a little, learn a little bit more about you and learn a little bit more about Decora Bank. Yeah, so, um, you know, I've been at the bank, uh, I think about five or six years now. I guess I kind of lose, lose track. But uh, um, so as a digital banking officer there, um, I'm, I'm very focused on uh, new technology, customer-facing technology, uh, customer experience, bank innovation, and kind of everything that happens to be in that space. So, you know, it's a really exciting place to be. And um, Decora, as far as our community, we really like to be focused on that. And uh, even though we're a small community bank, you know, we really believe that we're able to bring really outstanding experiences to our, our customer base and using, using technology like the, the Bold360 platform. That's great, and I, I, I'm proud to say I'm a member of both a credit union here in Boston and a local community bank. Um, all of my home purchases, uh, mortgages and otherwise, and all my family members have all been through local community banks. So I, 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 I'm very happy that you guys warm my heart. I think it's a great space, and one that I think, you know, when you look at kind of the world of banking, um, there's those very large financial institutions, you know, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America's of the world, and you know, they have giant IT budgets, big teams, and it's great to see that you know even regional banks and local community banks and credit unions are are now being able to take some of these new technology trends and really make them something that can deliver a much better customer experience. So some of that you know, would be disadvantage of being local. You had the high touch, great relationship, but you know a lot of technology might have been hard to to reach. That's really being turned up on 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 top of its head. And I'm really excited to explore that with you further during our time today. Yeah, absolutely. You're you're exactly right. It's uh. Being a community bank, you know, we don't have the same budgets, but, uh, you know, it's, it's fun to find ways that we can compete in that space. Yeah, that's great. So let's start out with a little, I, I like to like start with kind of the problem statement, because I think that helps everybody clear on, you know, is, is their problem the same, similar, you know, what can they learn? So let's start with kind of what were some of the core challenges that you were trying to address um, when you approach this work and kind of talk through that as a starting point. Yeah, so... You know, one of the challenges we have being a, a small community bank, um, you, we have staff that go home at the end of the day, just like a lot of community banks do. Uh, you know, we're, we're eight to five and uh, a lot of our customers have jobs that are eight to five. So uh, we don't necessarily have an after hours su support system. And we know that that's when a lot of people do their banking. Uh, people get home from work, they have dinner with their families and then 
they may sit down to pay some bills or, or check on their transactions for the day or, or whatever the case may be. But if they run into something, you know, they have to wait till next morning or who knows when they're busy again. So maybe it's a week later by the time they'd actually be able to call us. And, you know, we know that that's, that's not a great experience for our customers. So uh, as we approach this, you know, thinking about a AI technology and a chat bot, um, that, that was an avenue for us to offer extended support, uh, a way that we could program some things in there, basic questions that people may have or things they may run into that, um, okay, well, maybe there's not the traditional number I might call, but uh, I can just go interact with this bot and uh, I can get my answers right there. And, and that was really a successful thing for us. We were really happy to be able to offer that. And it's been very received well uh, by our customers too. Um, you know, we also know that people want choices, right? So it's fine that people can email us and they can pick up the phone and call us, but there's a growing segment of people who also want to be able just to log in and chat and do multitask, you know, while they're uh, chatting over here and then switch back over to their Word doc and type while they're waiting for a response. So, and, you know, we feel it's important to give our customers those options and, uh, you know, those are the biggest things we are really looking to achieve, you know, by going down this path. Yeah, the things that you mentioned there resonate so much with me. You know, one is I've, I've lived it. So, you know, I've been through those process of, you know, I have I have financial service institutions I work with every day. But also I think it bleeds into kind of how we're living our lives these days, you know, with all of us being home all the time. You know, I think about my setup here at work. I have two big monitors. I'm fortunate to have two big monitors, but I'm at this desk all day, every day, uh, you know, not no longer going to the office. So it's kind of like this multitask world where, you know, I'm engaging in Slack one minute and then having a, you know, a, a conversation on Facebook Messenger another, and then logging into some platform to deal with, you know, something related to work or my personal life. And so I think, you know, what you've mentioned is very much kind of uh, indicative or, or encapsulating of kind of the broader trends that's going on in all of our lives, where, you know, we want the personal touch, we want to feel like, like things have meaning, that, you know, we have a relationship when we're all self-isolated, but at the same time, we want to be able to do it on our terms and, you know, things don't always line up very neatly in our days. And so, you know, being able to do things off hours, you know, having uh, a company that, you know, feels like it cares and has that local relationship, but also allows me to live my life and how I have to live it these days. I think that probably really resonates with everybody out there. And I think that, that the nice thing that, that what I'm hearing you say is, you know, it's a really customer centric approach. It's what do our, you know, our members, the people in our community need and then how are we, you know, over indexing on that from the capabilities we need, we, we want to define and deliver? Yeah, absolutely. It was very much a customer focused approach. Um, you know, we, we do understand there's things we can gain in the back office by, by using these kinds of technologies too. But, you know, the customer always has to have a seat at the table. You know, what is, what's important to them? What do they need? What do they want? And how can we deliver that in a, in a really, you know, outstanding manner and provide that? provide that experience for them. Yeah, that's great. I think that's wonderful. And so, um, you know, and, and I think the thing that's interesting too you mentioned is just, you know, you have, you know, you don't have the biggest teams, but this also is an opportunity for you to really kind of extend and expand what your teams do, so not only in off hours, but also in freeing them up. So, you know, there's a goal of how do we help our people work on the most important things versus just anything that's coming in. And so I think that's another interesting perspective. I don't want to add anything to it of just you know, you also were, had your employees in mind when you were going through this effort in addition to the customer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we know with uh, a well-programmed uh, chat bot that if we have a lot of information in there, um, you know, we can collect questions from across all departments to know what people are commonly asking. Um, that really deflects a lot of incoming phone calls that, you know, could potentially take Maybe it's a one to two minute phone call, but you get enough of those throughout the day, they add up. So if we can if we can deflect those phone calls and just make it somewhat of a self-service tool, um, you know, our, our customer support team and our sales team, uh, just like in any community bank, people wear multiple hats. So it's not like they're just, you know, taking phone calls all day or opening accounts all day. They're juggling a lot of different tasks. So, um, you know, deflecting some of that incoming traffic and, and, and giving the customer the tools to, to find that information really efficiently and quickly also allows our staff to focus on some of those other tasks that they have throughout the day. And um, if it lessens the interruptions, sometimes that lessens, you know, errors made and things like that. So it's really a win-win situation to be able to do that. 
Yeah, the thing I really like too that you mentioned there is that you know it, it's allowing your employees to spend time on what's most valuable. You're, you're freeing them up from those kind of mundane, repetitive things, and that then ties back to your customer-centric approach and being customer-driven and having that kind of high-touch, great relationship. That is your differentiator or one of your big differentiators in the market. So I, I like that there's the benefit to the customer and that they're getting an answer quicker or they're getting what they need, but also it's reinforcing what you want your employees to be doing and what you want your overall, um, you know, what you want Decora to be doing as an organization, as a company. So that, that, that's awesome. I think that's, you know, really great reinforcing loop. Um, so let's, so that's really good context of why you started the project and what really, really were some of the objectives. Let's talk about a, little, a little bit about the journey. So. From when you started and as you were, you know, looking at different solutions in market to the point where you now have deployed it, let's talk through that journey a little bit. And can you share kind of what were some of the key steps and who was involved within the bank? Who are some of the key folks that you had at the table that might help other people that are, are working through this journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, so once we made the decision that we wanted to pursue this path and offer this technology and the service, um, like most banks, we did our vendor selection process, and everybody has their own process for that. But, you know, we were really impressed with the Bold 360 platform. Um, not only the technology that is behind it, um, there's a lot of ease with customer experience, so we're really happy with the customer experience. But um, on our side, the bank employee experience as well. Uh, it was just such an easy, intuitive platform that, um, at the end of the day, it was it was almost a no-brainer. I mean, it was a really easy decision for us to make. Um, as we got into that, uh, you know, we made sure that there were a lot of stakeholders at the table. Um, we had our COO involved. We had our CIO involved, um, along with myself. And it was really important for us to have that executive uh, level buy-in. And that really helped uh, with our organization, you know, drive that because it is a change to offer something new and it's a new channel of communication. Um, so having that buy in from an executive leadership and having them involved in the process, having some say in some different things was was really, really important for us. Um, one of the biggest uh, stakeholders is our marketing department. When we talk about having a, a chat bot um, and, and an a AI um, I think people think of robots being these cold, you know, heartless things or whatever you want to call it, but um, giving it a voice. And, and as we talk about the types of responses the bot has and giving it a personality, um, it's really fun to get our marketing department involved in, okay, some of the responses, how is that going to, how is that going to be worded and how is that going to make the customer feel when they get that response? So that was another really um, a, a key player in getting it developed. And then finally, um, as, as I guess I mentioned before, we really tried to get our whole staff involved on some level. So, you know, we went out to the various departments and said, well, what kinds of questions do your customers ask you? Mortgage department, what do you guys hear a lot? Business loans, what do you guys hear a lot? And that way, you know, on a bank-wide uh, level, you had a lot of buy-in already because they saw the value as far as customers coming, interacting with the bot and uh, getting some information and, you know, it can be used as a sales tool to some degree, a support tool to some degree. And um, so it, it was, it was a, I shouldn't say it was a challenge, but it was important for us to merely get everybody um, feeling like they had a stake in it, uh, you know, in some way, shape or form or seeing the benefit of it, certainly. Yeah, that, that's great. I, there's so many things that really resonate with me. We're actually working on a new updated um, like bot builder guide. So helping people out to that, maybe you've never built a bot before. And the one thing you touched on that's so critical is people often, they think about it as a technology challenge. And you know I think certainly people know that, that you have to create content, but I think they miss that kind of brand opportunity where I love that you talked about you're having your marketing team involved, where it's, you know, what's the personality of this? This may be one of the, like, you know, if you think about how often someone interacts with their bank, it could be the only experience, you know, once a quarter or once a year where someone actually interacts you know, I'm not just logging into the the uh, the website or the mobile app. So I think that that's a really good point around. You know, let's give it let's give it some personality, some brand identity, so that it really resonates what we want to be as a brand. And, and instead of just being kind of soulless and robotic in response, you can actually have a lot of fun with it, and and people like that. And also, it can also help to defuse if someone's frustrated or makes them want to engage with it more because you've made it playful and enjoyable. So I think that's wonderful. And I think the other thing that's great is that, you know, we often see the more cross-functional the group you get involved, the better. And so it's great to see that that was your approach of really taking, you know, getting lots of different disparate groups at the table, making sure they're bought in, making sure they're comfortable, 
on what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how you want to get there. Um, that is often we see a recipe for success. And, uh, and it's great to see that that really worked well for you as well, uh, you, you and your team as well. So those are all, I think, really helpful insights for other folks that are out there trying to go down this road. I'm interested though, so you talked about having all these people involved. Was there, you know, were there any other interesting reactions or what were some of the reactions from these teams? It sounds like they were bought in, but were there any kind of ahas you had in regards to how, you know, what was some of the early feedback or ongoing feedback from internal teams? Yeah, so um, it was definitely a scary thing at first, especially for some of the people who are going to be that first line of, okay, chat comes in, you got to be ready. Yes. Um, you know, it's a new thing. And as we talked about, okay, I've got all this other stuff going on with my day. Now what? Um, yes. <laughs> so it, it was, uh, you know, the first thing we want to make sure is this is not meant to be a hindrance. It's just another communication channel. And I think, you know, once we got started to get a few chats coming in, that's when it started to click a little bit. Um, so for some of our support members, you know, some of the first comments I've got, well, it's like, oh, well, now if I'm on the phone and somebody asks the curveball question, which invariably always happens, um, you know, I, I, I have to sit there and think. I have to ask them to be put on hold. Yes. Maybe I didn't understand the question, so I have to put on hold a second time. Um, now they're not feeling quite as face-to-face, -face, or they're not feeling the pressure of that person being on the other end of the line expecting an immediate response. It's really easy to, to, to you know, type back in your chat, let me check on that for you, you know, exactly. just a moment. And ask somebody, go grab your supervisor, and it buys you some time, and it takes that pressure off. And they they yes. really like that. So that was kind of an aha moment. Um, another big one for us was, uh, you know, as we have some of our customers who may travel abroad or, you know, perhaps live abroad uh, through various parts of the year, um, that can be a challenge for them to communicate with us, and they need to because you have time zone differences. You, you may have, uh, you know, different types of technology restrictions based on the country. Um, and we learned pretty quickly that, well, if you're international, you can still access the website and access the chat. You know, suddenly we actually had a very easy avenue to communicate, uh, not have to worry about them making an international phone call, um, some things like that. So. Right off the bat, we found a couple of things really quickly, like, oh, this is a really good tool for this. And and we had some people mention, like, oh, I actually like this better than the phone call. How do we get more people <laughs> going to chat? So uh, that was a really fun thing to see. And um, it's nice that it clicked so quickly for, you know, for some of those staff members. Uh, so that was really exciting for us. Yeah, that's great. I love that. Um, and I think the other thing that's great that you've mentioned is how there's these secondary benefits that oftentimes can become big that you know you don't think of or don't you aren't aware of initially and i think going to your point around even just you know not knowing an answer having to put someone on hold you know for the consumer that's better too because no one wants to call in and have to wait to talk to someone then once they get someone on the phone have to wait again to get an answer and aw awkward silence is the most awkward thing in the world but like even with someone you know well but awkward silence nobody likes so you gotta like fill that noise and that's why you, know, you put them on hold they get a little hold music or at least they know you're not there uh, but the nice thing about about messaging and chat is that <clears throat> there is no hold, you know, and a person can be doing something else while they're waiting for your response. So I think that that's great. And I also love the international example. I think both those are wonderful examples of where, you know, you didn't identify this as a core use case or challenge initially, but it really, you know, th th that secondary benefit emerged and then people get excited about it. One of the questions I have that we often hear about is, was there a reaction around, you know, people being concerned about their jobs and this chatbot replacing jobs? Was that something you heard as, you know, a narrative or concerns out of the team? You know, um, we we thought about that really early on, and that was one of the things that we we tried to really communicate when the process began. So, like, not at the end of it, but everybody, we're going to do chat, just so you know. You know, um, uh, it was never meant to replace anybody's jobs and and um, take anyone's job away, and, and we tried to make that very very clear and uh, understand that it's a tool to help. Um, as, as, we, as we talked about before, it's, hey, maybe you don't have to take this many phone calls a day. If we cut those down, yes. now you have all this other time for those things that you're stressed out about because you don't have much time to do. Um, and, and really that's how we made sure we pitched it to our staff and uh, made sure they understood it. So I think if we hadn't been very proactive about that, it would have been a, a bigger concern, but, um, you know, uh, credit to our, our executive team and planning team and everything for making sure that that was really well established early on that, you know, this is not a this is not a tool that's replacing anyone's job. It is it is supplementing what you do and, and hopefully actually being a benefit to you. 
Yeah, that's great. I, I, and I think the other thing, too, that you touched on quite a few times, I'll just reinforce, is that it was really from the top down. So you had senior leadership bought in. You had your planning team bought in. You had different key stakeholders bought in. So everybody kind of feels like, hey, you know, the success of this project is my success. And you are clear to them as to how this is going to make their job or day better or the customer's experience better, which always is great. You know, when you can kind of put put the mile marker around the customer and around the employee, that's always a recipe for success. So Ben, you shared a lot of really great insights around your journey to where you can, kind of where you started from, where you are now. What's next? What are the next big things you guys are thinking about uh, for this technology, and and you know what's the next kind of uh, horizon you're looking to go to go address? Yeah, so you know everything's uh, live on our website now, and we're really happy with the way things are working. Um, our next step is we want to get uh, our chatbot integrated into um, our digital banking platform. Um, and that's really going to broaden the amount of users it's accessible to. And I should say, I mean, it's accessible to everyone now on our website, but we know that we have a lot of people who the way they interact with our bank is they pick up their smartphone and they hit that mobile banking app and log in and do what they need to do. They may never visit our website other than the first time they check this out. Um, so getting that, uh, chat and the chat bot functionality, um, you know, kind of integrated into our digital banking experience is going to be a big win for us. Um, that way, people who may have never seen it or, you know, are like, well, I'm not going to take the time to go out to the website. Um, it's going to be right there in front of them and uh, give them the ability to interact as well. So that's really our next big milestone. And then after that, we're, you know, going to keep exploring what the possibilities are and, um, you know, what the functionality of the chat bot can do and, and, and really leverage that uh, just to keep creating a really good customer experience and uh, providing a, a good self-service tool for our customers and, uh, you know, the chat tool for our, our you know, support staff as well. That's great. The one thing I, I like that you you kind of positioned here is that you were focused, and, and not that you were too narrow focused, but you were deliberate, maybe is a better word, in uh, your approach with the initial implementation. So you said, hey, look at, you know, we can do this quickly on our website, we know it'll, you know, we have high high uh, confidence that we'll get good results out of it. Um, we probably are clear on some of our intents going into the website because that's when people are, are looking for a phone number or are going first. So you started there, but then you said, okay, now we saw success. Now where can we replicate that success? And this is a model we've seen a lot of companies do really well where you're, you're delivering your first step so that you can justify ROI and get people bought in and get momentum around the effort. But then once you do it, people get excited about it and you say, all right, well, where can we go next? And it becomes this kind of rinse and repeat process. And I think this is a great example of that where you said, hey, you know, the the integrating with our banking platform or digital banking platform might be a little more complex, you know, might take a little more work. There's obviously a lot of value there. Let's go where we think we'll be most successful to start. But then once we have that foundation built, let's go after the next big thing. Um, and, you know, there's an even bigger ROI there. So I think that's a wonderful example for folks out there where, you, know, you don't get too caught up in trying to do the big thing first because um, it can can in, insert more risk. But at the same time, don't miss the big opportunity because that can you know be a big windfall for the company and for your customers. Yeah, and I think the other side of that too is, especially when we talk about getting support staff comfortable and uh, you know with the platform and everything, yes. starting small rather than starting yeah, big is better. So. Like we'll get our we'll get started on the website. You know the incoming traffic goes and get it. You're not going to get slammed on the first day, uh, and that really gives everybody the opportunity to really like. Okay, I know what I'm doing on this. I know how to interact with it. And then as you scale up, um, you know they're more prepared and ready for that. And and that's an important thing too. Yeah, that's a really good point that I missed. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned it. Is also even if you're thinking about your website, you could say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna you know focus on mortgages first, or focus on you know our our lending department, or we're gonna focus on you know, so you can pick and choose where you want this technology to sit, and that you don't have to have it everywhere on day one. You can say what's manageable either from a team perspective or from a use case perspective or from a technology perspective. So I think that's another really good point you bring up. Um, so the last thing is I want to touch on, uh, you, 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 you worked really hard with your marketing team on getting great branding, on bringing this thing to life. I always like to ask people, um, do your, do your chatbots have names? Uh, and, uh, and any, any insight as to how you came up with those names? So, uh, we, yeah, so our, our chatbot, you know, we have, uh, we're Decora Bank and Trust. Um, yep. so naturally our, our bot is named Cora, C-O-R-A. <laughs> 
um, for Decora. <laughs> I, that was one even one of the uh, that was even one of our, our programmed uh, responses. I think is why are you named Cora? Well, because Decora. Nice. Um, um, uh, the other one, so we we do have a, a secondary website now too. You know, we've we've recently launched a, a digital only brand called uh, Green Penny. And it was important for us to also have that, that AI technology on the Green Penny website as well. So, of course, that chatbot is named Penny. So I don't know right. if that's uh, original or not, but it seemed to fit. And uh, we're, we're happy with it, of course. And, um, you know, we made sure to take time to kind of create a little avatar and a kind of cartoon character type thing to, to represent Cora and Penny. So um, it, it was a fun part of the process to do that. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think the other thing too that people miss and like even those little things you mentioned of like somebody asking the bot, you know, uh how you know, how did you come up with your name or what is your name and how did that come about? Those little things make a big difference. It's just like how we think about when someone comes into a branch and the way we decorate the branch, how we greet them, you know, all these little things matter. Um, and the little things, you know, build up to big experiences. So I even love, you know, that that you thought through this, your team spent time on it, you built a little avatar, a visual to go along with it. You know, all those things, one, make it feel like it's part of you as a company and who you are. Two, I think they mean a lot to the to the, the customer themselves. And three, I think they help the broader teams getting involved to get more excited. It's not just about, you know, managing content and workflows and chats. It's let's use our fun creative side. Let's use, you know, our right brain to go do something a little more fun. Uh, that makes it more engaging to both the internal teams and to the customers. So those are wonderful. Yeah, I think uh, some of our staff members have already planned on on dressing up like the Avatar Cora <laughs> for Halloween this year. So I think it'll be uh, funny to have kind of a Hallow uh, costume contest around that or something maybe. That's funny. We we uh so we have a, a bot. Of course, we have a bot on our website and on the Bold 360 website, and it's named BB. And so uh, we have some teams in Israel, and they don't like that because their prime minister is named BB. Uh, but people love BB, and uh, same thing. We have people on our team that want to get BB costumes, and you know they love BB pins. And I think BB sometimes is more of a celebrity than I'd like him to be. Uh, but uh, but that's great. That's really fun. Well, Ben, I really enjoyed our conversation. I think you bring a great perspective, a lot of great insights on you know something I think a lot of people are facing right now in the world of teams working remotely, customers engaging through new digital channels. How do you really look at that and accelerate your digital transformation strategy um, around things like chatbots and 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 uh, digital engagement through chat? I think certainly you've shown that it's something that any company can do if they're focused on it and they have a you know a team that really is committed to its success. You don't have to be you know a, a Fortune 500 company. Um, so I think that these are all really great lessons and insights for folks out there. So I want to thank you so much for joining. Yeah, thank you for uh, letting me take some time to talk to you today. I appreciate it. Yeah, and so for those of you that may have joined partway through, this is our CX Next Live series. It's a weekly series we do focused on the world of customer experience. Uh, joining me this week is Ben Wells of Decora Bank. Ben shared their journey on uh, driving their experience around improving uh, engaging with their customers through digital channels like chat and chatbots. A lot of really great insights on who he got involved, some of the key uh, metrics and challenges they were trying to address and then their journey to implementing a chatbot and what they've seen as success and where they're going from here. So I want to, uh, once again, thanks Ben for joining. Thank you for all of you out there that have joined this week's episode. Please feel free once again to send us comments, questions. We do these weekly series for all of you out there. I want to thank you all for joining. For those of you that maybe missed it, there's a recording that you can view after the fact. Um, and also I want to promote all of you to reach out to us. We're really here to help all of you out there improve your customer journey and improve your overall customer experience. Thank you so much for joining this week's episode of CX Next Live. We look forward to future conversations and please take care. Thanks so much.